When this show debuted on American TV, it was as a mid-season replacement for another show. Five years later, it's still on air and one of its stars is a South African from Durban. It's not often that a Hollywood sitcom breaks the rules and engages a South African to feature in one of its leading roles. And that's exactly what's happened here at Rules of Engagement. In case you missed it, the story centers on how two couples and their single friend deal with relationships. Megan Price plays Audrey, one half of a long married couple. We're sitting here in the diner where a lot of the comedy happens. Is, I mean, is it all real? Are the props real? Are the cakes real? Uh, the cakes were real the first season until I looked in the case and I was like, that one's moving. It was green and a little wiggly. Your husband gives you a really hard time. Yeah, no kidding, right? He should be nicer to me. He doesn't know what he's got. He being Pat Patrick Warburton's character, a sport-loving, emotionally frozen spendthrift who sees marriage as some kind of competition. Good comedy needs a bad guy. What's next? Your character Jeff really does give Audrey a very hard time. If you've been in a relationship, it's just relatable. There's something stupid that happens with these two people every episode, so... But, um... Yeah, I... I, I, I don't know. I get a lot of, uh, uh, are you like Jeff, you know, and uh, I, don't, I don't think so. Too much. Not that bad. And stars like Bianca Kailik get a particular kick out of watching the newest guy on the team. You know, I don't even know why I come over here. Well, it's certainly not in response to an invitation. <laughs> All right, that's it. I can take a hint. If you had to choose a favorite character in the show, who would that be? I would say with Timmy, it has to be my favorite character. Um, number one, because I love Athir so much. But also, I feel like the show really began to gel when the Timmy character came aboard because we always had, you know, the married couple and the engaged couple, but then there was Spade. And you can only watch Spade go out with, you know, crazy young chicks for so long before he needed somebody to work off of. And like, Athir came in and they really have this like the odd couple dynamic going on and and Athir also is the most like actory of all of us and so we always make fun of him because he's always asking for like extra takes. We're like we're on a sitcom. It's not necessary. <laughs> the son of MP Sandy Kalyan, Adhir chose acting over politics, made a name in the UK, then made it big in the US. So here we are, you're in Timmy's character, That's in your right. suit, mm -hmm. in your office, take me on a tour. Well, this is my, uh, this is my desk here, uh, and this is the position I'm usually uh, sat in when I'm experiencing the greatest amount of abuse from David Spade. Uh, and that stands true for when we're uh, actually shooting and also when we're not. Your character's uh, yes. from South Africa, how did that come about? That's right, well, my evolution on the show is sort of a, a curious one. Uh, most actors, uh, and myself included, will have to go through a lengthy audition process before um, you know you come to be a regular on a television show. Um, this was really a, a shot in the dark on the part of the producers. Uh, they were hopeful that I would come in and maybe do an episode or two. And so uh, there was no character written on the page and it evolved as you know I continued to be uh, involved with the show. And uh, they told me that they wanted to mirror John Gielgud and Dudley Moore in the film Arthur. So I started playing the characters though he was you know, incredibly proper and very, very English. Mm. And then they discovered that I was from South Africa and uh, unbeknownst to me just decided to write it in uh, into an episode and I found myself at a table read saying um, but I'm from South Africa in the most quintessential English accent um, possible so I decided to instead of just fighting it I just went with it and thought you know if I can represent uh, in any shape or form I'm going to do that so right we're about to enter Russell Dunbar's office uh, Russell Dunbar on the show is played by the incomparable David Spade and uh, as you can see it says project director he has no job on the show he really doesn't. He's, uh, you know, an uh, underworked, womanizing trust fund child. For your breakout role in comedy, you couldn't beat trading lines with the eternally dry David Spade. Hi, sweetie. David, how does your character get away with being such a womanizer? Thank you for asking that. <laughs> Every question, first of all, you're supposed to act grateful. Thank you. <laughs> so nice to do an interview. I want a new country to think I'm nice. I have a clean start. Okay, question is, it's not a good question to answer to sound like a nice guy. A womanizer, I'm really offended by the term skirt chaser, I like. Yeah, I got you a skirt chaser. <laughs> I think I've played one always and now no one knows what else to make me on shows. It's just unimaginative, everyone's like, what if you, and I go play a guy who hits on girls, they're like, yes! 
So that's just sort of what I do, and it, I guess it's funny because I'm ugly, which I keep reading about on the internet, and uh, that I would never get cute girls, so that's the hilarious part. You can poke your head in, but then poke it right back out. Okay. See him? Just uh, answer that question very carefully, yeah, yeah. and here we go. The relationship between you guys, what, what is it? Is it love or hate between the two of you? The latter is warmer. Uh, hate is a strong word. It's accurate, but it's strong. Uh, hang on, are these my answers? This is my cheat sheet. So if I have a, uh, a scene and I can't remember anything because I'm 70, uh, I write my notes down. And then during the scene, I can look at them. I look in there too. Oh, there is one. Oh my gosh. Really? I did not know my dad was in town. That's how I did it. But I went like this. Sometimes they get me if I go like this. <laughs> really? I did. Then I go, where is it? This has a bunch on it. Can you see all these cheats? This is what I do when it gets crunch time and we're rolling and I'm like, I should know my lines by now. It is the show. But then I go, I'm coming. Scripted by the Emmy Award winning writers of Everybody Loves Raymond, all the gags still have to be based in truth. The comedy has been such a success over the years. What is the secret to the longevity of the show? I think the thing that keeps the show going is that it's about relationships. Mm. So, I mean, it's funny, which obviously keeps it going, but I think that people find um, the relationships relatable, to be totally redundant. But that's what I always hear, you know, from people. It's like, I'm just like that girl, or that guy's just like my husband, or, you know, everybody has a boyfriend, a girlfriend, or a husband, or a wife, or used to, or is going to. I mean, it's, you know, it's people. And amongst this favored bunch one of our own catch season five coming back to your screen soon on sabc3